Hello everyone, I'm going to present our work, Key Recovery from Grams to the Log Leakage in Hash and Size Signature over Pinchot Legacy. This is a joint work with Diana Fu, Paul Kirchner, Mehdi Bibuch, and Alexander Worley. I am Yang Yu. This is a group analysis work. Our targets are to let its signature scheme, Falcon and DLP. Falcon is a round two candidate in the list of DQC competition, and DLP is the ancestor of Falcon. In this work, we first identify a sort of side channel leakage in some implementation of Falcon and DLP. Then, we link this side channel leakage and the secret key. Based on that, we show some evidence of a weakness of the original Falcon implementation. Also, we present a experimentally validated attack against the DLP. In recent years, there emerged a lot of legacy crypto systems of great performance. Some of them have been used in real world applications. For a practical thing, its security should be not only in terms of the algorithm itself, but also of the concrete implementation. The security of algorithm is usually estimated by lattice attack, algebraic attack, combinatorial attack, and so on. And for implementation security, we often consider set channel attacks that include timing attack, power analysis attack, and so on. When it comes to set channel attacks, lattice signature is an important subject. There are two main paradigms for lattice-based signatures. The first one is hash and size. The earliest lattice signatures, GGH and N25, are in this family. But these two schemes were broken by statistical learning attacks. Later, the famous GPB paper proposed a secure framework for lattice hash and size scheme. And then, the GPB scheme is developed as some practical instantiation, such as Falcon and DLP. The other paradigm for lattice signatures is Diashami. In this family, there are also many efficient proposals, like this, Elysium, to Tesla. Nowadays, uh, there have been many set-channel set work for lattice signatures. However, most of this work discuss the Ashami signature scheme. Actually, the signing algorithm of a Ashami scheme usually relies on basic arithmetic operations mostly. And the secret key is used in a direct and a linear way. By contrast, in the hash and size scheme, the signing algorithm often relies on less Gaussian sampling. So the secret key uh, is used in a rather opaque way. As a result, uh, it may be more complicated to analyze the set channel leakage in the implementations of a hash and size. Also, it may be harder to understand the relation between the set channel leakage and the hash and size secret key. In this work, we initiate a study of set channel security for less hash and size scheme. We focus on Falcon and DLP. They are two most practical hash and size scheme currently. Falcon is a strong candidate uh, in the least PQC competition. It is the only hash and size scheme among three round two at signature. Also, it is the most compact one. And the DLP is the ancestor of Falcon. It was proposed by Zuka, Lubeshevsky, and Vlad. Both Falcon and DLP are the instantiations of GPV scheme over initial legacy. And on the basis of DLP, Falcon makes use of an improved Gaussian sampler called the Fastorian sampler. Okay. Enchu is one of the most important lattice crypto systems. It is defined over polynomial rings, and the secret key of Enchu is a pair of short polynomials f and g. 
and the positive T is, is their ratio. The underlying lattice is called tissue lattice, defined like this. From the intrusic T, we can complete the uh, intrusic basis by solving the intrusic equation. And in fact, and the DLP, this basis is used as the trapdoor. It is used for less Gaussian sampling. So, four elements inside are short polynomials. In the GPB framework, signing consists in less Gaussian sampling. And in fact, and the DLP, the less Gaussian sampling is accomplished by the KGPB sampler or its FFT variant, in which the high dimensional less Gaussian sampling is decomposed into many one dimensional integer Gaussian sampling. And the standard deviation of those integer Gaussians are inversely uh, proportional to the Gramscian norm of the sampling basis. Also, the Gaussian centers vary as per the message and uh, the intermediate uh, samples. So, to deal with different integer Gaussian parameters, both Fatten and DLP uh, use rejection sampling. That is a generic technique to produce varying Gaussian from a fixed distribution. Rejection sampling could lead to some entropy loss. And intuitively, the loss is mainly determined by the standard deviation of the target Gaussian. And in the implementations of Fatten and DLP, we show that the average number of loop repetition is proportional to the corresponding Gramscian norm of the sampling basis. So, from a timing channel, we can measure the number of loop repetition during each signing. This allows us to approximate the Gramscian norm by maximal likelihood estimate uh, from sufficiently many signatures. So we call this set channel leakage Gramscian norm leakage. Indeed, the Gramscian norm leakage is dangerous. We show that there is a polynomial time algorithm that can recover the intrusic key from the Gramscian norm of the intrusive basis. Our algorithm consists of two steps. At the first step, we compute a polynomial f bar plus gg bar from the Gramscian norm. Here, the bar denotes the complex conjugation. And this step is our main technical result. Okay. And once we know F bar plus GG bar. Then we can use the Gentry theorem algorithm to recover the intro secret key F and G uh, in polynomial time. In next talk, uh, we only focus on the details of the first step. Okay. The goal of this step is to recover a polynomial U that is F bar plus GG bar from the gram schmidt norm of the matrix form of G and A. And our method depends on the used matrix form. Actually, there are two common matrix forms. The first one is identifying A as an anti-circling matrix. And the first row is the coefficient vector of A. This matrix form corresponds to power basis and it is used in DLP. And the second matrix form is built recursively. It identifies A as a 2x2 two two block matrix, and each block corresponds to a subfield element. And this matrix form actually corresponds to a power basis in a bit reverse order. And it is well compatible with FFT, and uh, the top of ring structure, it is used uh, in second. For these two matrix forms, uh, we have some common facts. First, the matrix form of U is a gram matrix B decomposed. Second, the product of first K squared gram schmidt norm 
equals the determinant of the case leading block of the matrix form of U. Next, uh, let's discuss the recovery problem uh, for A and uh, A matrix form respectively. Okay. For the case of A matrix form, uh, we note that uh, the matrix, the leading block of A U, is actually a symmetric toplate matrix. So by sure complement, we can build a quadratic equation uh, of the coefficient U I plus one. And this implies that uh, once we know the coefficient u0 to ui together with the norm of bi plus 1 star, then we can solve the next coefficient ui plus 1 by solving this quadratic equation. And this gives us a recovery algorithm of a complexity cubic of n. And the case of A matrix form is more complicated. We need some algebraic knowledge. Okay, uh, let sigma be the field automorphism mapping to Z to minus to Z. And the trace of U is the sum of U and the sigma U. And the norm of U is the product of U and the sigma U. So trace and the norm map a field element to a subfield one. And in the matrix FU, we can see the subfield element UE and UO actually are the trace of field element U and U over C. Also, it is easy to see the first half of uh, gram schmitt norm actually uh, determine the subfield element UE because UE is the first leading block. And we also uh, found that the second half of the gram schmidt norm uh, corresponds to another subfield element, u tilde. And u tilde equals 2 times the norm of u over the trace of u. So the recovery problems uh, can be projected uh, into the subfield, since these two elements are subfield elements. Okay. And assume we can solve the recovery problem in the subfield and we compute u e and u theta. Then from these two subfield elements, we can compute the trace and the norm of u. Now the remaining work becomes to recover u from its trace and norm. We note that u and sigma u are two roots of this quadratic equation over field. So the computation of u boils down to computing a square root over a second atomic field. We propose uh, an algorithm to do that. Our idea is still projecting the uh, computing onto subfield repeatedly. Actually, we note that the norm of t is the square root of the norm of a. And once we know the norm of t, then we can compute the square of the trace of t and the square of the trace of t over c. And from these two traces, we can construct the field element t itself. And we show that uh, our square root algorithm runs in a quadratic path. Okay, now we have seen how to project the recovery problem uh, onto subfield and how to lift the back. And then the whole recovery can be viewed as the reconstruction of the backing tree from its leaf to its root. Actually, the leaf in the backing tree corresponds to the gram schmidt norm, and the root uh, is the polynomial f bar plus g g bar. And we show that the complexity of the whole recovery is also cubic of n. Uh, that is the same as the case of A matrix form. So far, we have seen the recovery algorithm for two different matrix forms. But there is still some difference between the theoretical algorithm and a practical side channel attack. Actually, 
In previous algorithms, we assume the exact Gram Schmidt norm are provided. However, in practice, we must take into account the major error on the Gram Schmidt norm leakage. Actually, to achieve a precision of 2 to the minus p, we need at least a 2 to the 2p sample. So, a natural question here is that can we adapt the previous algorithms to noisy input? The answer is for DLP, we can do that indeed, but for Bacon, uh, we have not get the solution. Okay, let's see the detail of our uh, experimental validation. For the case of DLP, the implementation we worked with uh, is proposed by Thomas Platt and written in C++. And the parameter set we consider is claimed for 119 qubits of security, in which n equals 2 to the 9 and the module of q is about 2 to the 10. And to measure the number of loop repetition, uh, we simply add some instrumentation in the code. And this step can be replaced by some standard uh, channel uh, attack, like uh, cache timing attacks. Okay. And to uh, cope with the noisy and uh, gram schmidt norm, and we combine the previous algorithm with tree search. Now, at each step, we will compute all possible candidates for the next coefficient. And if there is no candidate found, we just prove the current prefix. And our experimental result shows that uh, given about a 2 to the 35 DLP uh, signatures, we can indeed uh, break some concrete uh, instance in practice. Okay. Unfortunately, uh, the case of Falcon is much more challenging. That is because uh, to deal with the noise on the Gram-Schmidt norm, we have to compute whole set of atomic integers whose square is in a third, is, is in some set, but we have no idea to solve this problem. Okay, to conclude, uh, in this work, we studied the set channel security of two main practical hash and set schemes, Falcon and DLP, and we show that in some uh, implementations of Falcon and DLP, uh, the gram schmidt norm of the liquid entry basis leaks through our timing. And uh, we also show that this leakage is dangerous indeed. We first propose an efficient algorithm to compute the entry key from the gram schmidt norm of the entry basis. Based on that, we propose an experimentally validated attack against the DLP. Also, our theoretical algorithm can be viewed as an evidence of a structural weakness of the original Falcon implementation. At last, uh, we should highlight that uh, the updated version of Falcon has already patched the gram schmidt norm leakage. They make use of a uh, more careful rejection sampling. So the entropy loss uh, is made independent of the secret gram schmidt norm. This kind of measure indeed uh, leads to some uh, efficiency loss, but our result shows that it is important for security. Okay, uh, that is my talk. Thank you.